down for the Argonauts from the Winnipeg 52. And flags fly right away as Glenn Johnson and company go to work. And Jermaine Copeland with that completion now moves into 20th place on the CFL's all-time receiving yards list. And next up for him at number 19, Josh Procedure. Climey. Coming Toronto, after you, Climey. So we've got two reporters and our, our first analysts in, in the studio that are being chased. One by G. Roy Simon, one by Jermaine Copeland. Yeah, it says we've got some quality guys uh, back there in the studio that have really put up some great numbers. Jermaine Copeland, some tremendous years in Montreal and, and certainly uh, followed Jim Barker to Calgary and once again here to Toronto. Looks to be the productive receiver to able to get him the football. So the family gets the yard. Those pushing them back to their own side of midfield. First and 15, swings it up. And again, the tackle, the catch is made rather. And this time, it's cut by Spencer Watt. And he's got a first down to the 37-yard line. And another helmet comes free. That's Javon Johnson who lost his bucket. That was a major point of conversation last week around the Canadian Football League. Absolutely got to tighten them up, especially today with these two physical football teams. And it's a thing of, uh, of, of, of just ball security and, and, and certainly, I think, security for the players as well. You got to tighten the helmets. Pitcher Watt and Simon Fraser making an impact early. Game was trying. And here they come again. And this time, the catch is made by Sammy Tranks in his Canadian Football League debut. He's got his first catch and moves the sticks again as he gets down to the 21-yard line for a pickup of 16 yards. Sammy Tranks playing for Brandon Rideau, who's out with an ankle injury, and Tranks immediately getting involved and showing you his explosiveness. Coach Barker liked this kid in training camp. They want to give him the football and let's let him just make plays. First-year player from the University of Maryland. Three first downs already for the Argos in this opening drive. And now 11 on first down again. Lots of time. Fires it up for Dury. And Andre Dury's got another one. As he gets down to the 11-yard line, they might actually mark him a bit short. Only two teams this year have scored touchdowns on their opening possession of the game. Montreal and then last night, the BC Lions did it. Yeah, you talk about a hot start, a little pressure cooker that Cleo Lemon's been in. A lot of, a lot of talk about whether or not he's the quarterback of the future. And he's coming out here trying to put all those questions to rest as he's gone five for five here on this drive. Board. And move the ball against the CFL's number one defense. Coming back to the shotgun, here's a first down for Toronto. And Cackard on the carry, Chad Cackard to the corner, touchdown for just like that, the Argos put together an opening drive that sees them score a touchdown for the first time on their opening possession of the game. And Gordon, you know, who saw this coming? Five for five with the quarterbacks under the gun and has, you know, that hasn't got a good reputation for pushing the ball down the field and, and being a pure passer. And, and then he's been asked by Jim Barker to make better decisions in the run game, gives it to Chad Keckert. And he does the rest, untouched into the end zone. Toronto making it look easy against the best defense in the league thus far in the CFL. Seven That's plays, it. 64 yards, and the Argos have the early lead by a score of 7 nothing. You're watching the CFL on TSN. Absolutely, and it's like sounding a death warrant when you don't have the football. Yeah, like give it to Montreal and Anthony like Walker. Harry Floyd takes the kickoff from his eight-yard line. The Bombers get to work now as Floyd fumbles the football. They'll mark them out of the 23-yard line. The Bombers will maintain possession. The Argos are arguing they touched the ball before it went out of bounds. Yeah, just great hustle play and heads up. And Perry Floyd certainly got to be a better caretaker than football. And Will Powell just sitting there just got a hand on it. And I really believe that, that they could have a they could have a point there and this is a huge turning point Jim Bark wants to throw that fly I was pretty close might want to take a second look at that first down bombers from their 22 yard line as Buck Pierce goes to work Pierce from the shotgun brings it down under pressure Pierce will run and runs into a couple of Argo linebackers as Jero Kowali and Anthony Cannon are there to make the stop yeah, Obi Khan is in the middle. Oh, Buck Pierce, you just saw him there. He doesn't go feet first. He goes head first, and he's going to rely heavily on Fred Reed, who's second lead in Russian league right now. Terrence Edwards, he's a vertical stretch for Buck. Look for him to push the ball down the field when he does. 82 is going to be underneath of most of them. And then up front, you got Obi Khan, a fifth year, sixth year player from Simon Fraser. 
Actually, eight years in the league, six with the Bombers, and Obi Khan's going to be huge for that offensive line to get off on a good start today. And now Pierce fires it up to the sideline. Well covered, but making the catch is Terrence Jeffers Harris, and he should have a Winnipeg first down. Yeah, Buck Pierce is going to show you why he's so productive and why he's so lethal. You know, he just does a lot of things well. Just slides in the pocket, avoids a tackler, and then dumps it out, keeps his head downfield, and finds a receiver and moves the chain. It's huge because momentum is definitely in Toronto's favor right now. Back to the down they go, and this is Pierce. And Pierce, who was held to 63 yards, Fred Reed, rather, who was held to 63 yards rushing in the first meeting between these two, gets a gain of about seven. But this defense here, uh, very physical. You got Kevin Huntley back in the lineup after missing last week with an Achilles injury. Linebacking core, I tell you, watch this guy. You'll enjoy the game. Israel Kowali, number five, he's going to be special. And in the secondary, look at the look at the man in the corner. Byron Parker says he's got the best hands on the trial offense, period. And that's brought to you by Rona Cup, part of the CFR with 18s, and the Argos have the football, the fumble. And turnovers have been a story for both these teams, and the Argos have the first one as Ajiro Kowale comes up with it, and the Argos with the lead have the football. Big Kevin Huntley getting her done up front. He's got those big mitts, and he uh, Buck Pierce hands it off, and, and then you can see the big mitt come in right on the football, swats it out of Fred Reed's hand, and then you've got... Ricky Foley being Johnny on the spot, University of York product, who was a decathlete there, is smothering what he thinks is a discus, but it's actually a football. Foley and a big man, Kevin Huntley, getting it done, creating some more, more momentum for the Toronto Argonauts here early. They'll start just inside the Winnipeg 40-yard line, first and 10. And left with six receivers in, is under pressure, and Cleo Lemon gets away. That's a room to run. And Lemon uh -oh. belted down the 25-yard line. <laughs> Joe Lobendine got him, and Cleo Lemon's helmet came off. And Lemon is shaken up. Uh, and, and he should be, because Joe Lobedon is lethal. He's like 5'10", 5'11", 235 pounds. And Cleo, he, you know, he does a nice job in the pocket, keeping his feet active and, and not panicking too much. Watch his feet. Uh-oh, uh oh I'm out of here. And then he takes off, and his head is not on a swivel, and he gets lit up and ear holed by Joe Lobedon. And he knows it. Note to self, keep my head on a swivel when I'm running down the field. What is the story with these helmets, though? I mean, well, Lemon, Lemon's got a four-point chin strap done up, and helmets are flying off all over the league. Yeah, but that is just a major blow. That is impact, and I think that's what we're seeing here more than anything because he's, I mean, he's, he's checking all his teeth right there. I'm telling you. He got, he got popped right underneath the chin there, and, and that exploded all four of those chin straps off, and of course the helmet comes off. We've been seeing a lot of that this week. I don't think it's so, or this year, I don't think it's so much players are leading with their helmets. It's just good, physical, hard-hitting football. And so Dalton Bell will come in for Toronto. He has not attempted a pass yet this year. Came in for Please put nine in week two seconds against Calgary against Winnipeg nine last year. You see those clock. teeth? Those pretty teeth that Dalton Bell's right there. You see those right there? Yeah. I'm telling you, he better be getting a mouth guard in if he learned anything from Cleo Lemon, because Cleo's checking for his on the sidelines. Really? And Dalton Bell doesn't look like he's wearing it. It's a first down for the Argos from the 26-yard line as Bell goes to work. And the give goes to Cackert. Chad Cackert is wrapped up quickly as Lobadon got in there. And part of the talk, Matt, has been that the chin straps don't fit these new protective helmets. Uh, it's hard to imagine why so many helmets are flying off. I'm not buying into that, but here you see Cleo Lemon. He doesn't look right Oof. quick enough, and uh, he ducks, and he kind of comes right underneath the, in contact with Joe Lobodon's helmet, and that thing is just ejected off his head. And I guarantee he's looking for some teeth, and he's going to the locker room right now as we speak. And the Argos appear to be way offside. Bell to the corner. The catch is made by Sammy Tranks, but there are two flags down. Tranks appeared to go out of bounds and come back in, and there was also very early movement by the Argos. Absolutely, and that's something that Tranks has got to learn. He's got to give his quarterback room to throw the football down the field, and, and when you're going vertically, you've got to move a defender inside so that when you do go back to the outside, you're not right on the sidelines, which we saw Sammy Tranks there. 
But that is uh, what they say is Dalton Bell's forte is pushing the football down the field and his willingness to be aggressive and to knife it down the field. And Offside, Toronto number 89. Penalties decline. Third down. Spencer Watt is called on the offside. The penalty declined as the pass was incomplete. And so the Argo field goal unit will come on, which will bring on Noah Prefontaine, who's 7 for 7 this year and 12 for 12 going back to last regular season. He's on fire. The veteran kicker really settled down after his second stint coming back from Edmonton. Second stint with the Argos and is really settling down quite nicely. From the 30. And Prefontaine is good. And the Argos have a 10-0 lead on the Bombers in Toronto. Back here in Toronto, here is Sarah Orleski. Gord, heat and humidity were expected to be a big factor today with the Humidex being over 40 degrees here in Toronto. It certainly doesn't feel like it inside, though. It's only around 23 degrees here on field level. The decision was made last night to close the roof here. Let me tell you, it made a lot of players very happy that they are not having to deal with the extreme humidity that they're seeing outside. In fact, when the Blue Jays played here on Thursday afternoon, they closed the roof despite the fact it was a gorgeous day in Toronto just for the protection of the players and fans. It has been a hey, sweltering ball. week in Eastern Canada and the United States. And here on return again is Perry Floyd, who this time hangs on to the football and gets up to the 25-yard line. And the tackle is made by Toronto's Matt Black as Buck Pierce is... The quarterback left standing for now as Cleo Lemon has been sent to the Toronto dressing room after that hit. And I think very surprising to all, he finds himself halfway through the first quarter down 10 to the Toronto Argonauts who have really been hard pressed to find points this year offensively and they've already put a 10 spot on the board halfway through the first quarter. And the Bombers hemmed in deep after a turnover. From the 27, Pierce fires over the middle of the pass, it's caught. Deflected and caught by Corey Watson, who got the bounce and made the catch, and it's a first down for Winnipeg on a gain of 12. Yeah, it looked like uh, the swinging gate, the little lateral back, uh, but this is this wasn't planned. It's a ball that was well thrown to Edwards, very tight window, just sits down in the zone, goes right through his arms, he tips it up, and there's Watt bringing it down. So that's huge for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Sometimes. It's better to be lucky than good. And meantime, Terrence Edwards shaken up, and his helmet appeared to slip. His chin strap came up around his nose on the tackle. Talking to Terrence before the ball game, he knew how physical this game was going to be, as they always are with the Toronto Argonauts, and he was well prepared for and mentally, and uh, it really looks like Adriel Kowali kind of gets a piece of him and uh, says this is what it's going to be like right here Kowali's going to take him and he's just going to hit something trying to get to the to the eventual receiver who's got the football and he goes right through Terrence Edwards and puts him out of the game. First down Winnipeg from the 43 yard line. Here's face to Reed and fires that pass outside. Clarence Denmark makes the catch and Denmark has a gain of about five the first year man from Arkansas Monticello go ahead Gord ask me I know it I know what, it what what is the team name of Arkansas Monticello the bow weevils and, that's right and what is a bull weevil it's some type of uh, bug that gets in the cotton down there you're right I, am. I got it I got the cover that is a game of six flags are down the bombers are offside Watson makes the catch puts his head down and gets to the Toronto 50 yard line Lynn J. Shell makes the tackle. His helmet comes off. And this play is coming back. Yeah, it is, because it looks like the bow weevil is off sides on the other side of the play. So all for naught for the bombers. Regroup, look at second and long, which has been a tough situation. Offensively, you don't want to put yourself in that, and they certainly are here going second and nine. Offside, Winnipeg number 89. Five yard penalty, repeat, second down. And it was Clarence Denmark who's offside, and it'll make it now second. And a long eight yards. Watch how much more difficult this becomes. Toronto can sit back a little bit, play everything underneath, and come up and make a play. Early movement again. And this time Ronald Clemens appeared to jump along with Claude Roten. Look, okay, everybody's pointing at everybody. Nobody's guilty. But there's flags everywhere, so somebody's going to get locked up. 
And Claude Roten seems to indicate that the call will go against Winnipeg. Those two guys we just showed there, Claude Roten and Kevin Huntley, massive interior defensive linemen for the Toronto Argonauts. Claude Roten from LSU and big Kevin Huntley. Offside, from Toronto number 98. Five-yard penalty for feet second down. So the offside call pushed back the other way. Roten's the cheating tiger right there, Claude Roten. <laughs> yep. He was uh, he's a player. He's a difference maker in the middle along the big Kevin Huntley from Kansas State. Those two big players can plug up the whole interior and let the fold in front us do their thing on the edge. Back to second and four. Pierce fires to Watson, makes the catch, has a first down across midfield to the Toronto 54-yard line. Corey Watson experiencing some, some tremendous success for the Winnipeg offense. And really, when he's when his number's been called, he's done the job. And this is simple sit-down. Corner's giving him too much room, and Buck just sees it right away, gets the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible, moves the chains. Sammy Small's giving him too much respect there. Territory for the first time. This is Fred Reed. He's got to get it away from MJ Shell. And Reed's still going inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line before he's finally brought down by Byron Parker. And the gain is 21 yards. Excellent, excellent job up front. Labat does a nice job with the seal up front, just opens it up. The left guard for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It's a beautiful thing. He's right here. Watch him move out his man. Bang. Bang on Foley. That just that's it. Walking apart for the big boy. Puts his hands on him, moves him out of the way, and Fred Reed does the rest. First down from the 34-yard line. And Pierce looking up top. Still looking, and Pierce will now run it. And dives down to the 25-yard line for a gain of nine. Let's go back to the running play here and uh, talking about the offensive line, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Just a nice job. You're gonna want. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna watch LeBat and he's gonna just put his hands on Foley and he weighs so much more than Foley. Foley's a tremendous athlete. There he is right there. Watch. He just puts his hands on him, takes his momentum, uses momentum against him, and then Fred Reed explodes through the hole, is into the secondary untouched. Mark has a gain of eight. Second and two for Buck Pierce. Pump fake. Out the flight he goes, and Fred Reed's got a first down, tripped up inside the 20-yard line. As Anthony Cannon got a hand on him, but it's a pickup. Of about seven yards. Speaking to Orlando Steinhauer, secondary coach for the Toronto Argonauts, and he was talking about the linebackers, a couple linebackers, Quali and Cannon, that man who was in coverage on Fred Reed there. And what you lose with Pottinger and Ivan out of the lineup, you gain in quickness and explosiveness with Idaro and Cannon, and, but you, you will lose some as far as technique goes, and they will be burnt, and that time Cannon got caught now and outflanked. Fires it down to Watson, who fights his way down about the seven-yard line, very close to another Winnipeg first down. And the two quarterbacks this afternoon are a combined 11 for 11. Oh, now, you know what's going to happen now, Gordon. You just jinxed them. No such thing These as jinxes, guys, Oh, come on. No such thing as jinxes. Well, I tell you. It's fun when you're a quarterback and you come out on fire like that, but it's not very fun when you're looking at a 10-point deficit halfway through the first quarter, and Pierce is trying to erase that right now. First and goal from the seven. Here is Reed, and Reed puts his head down, gets to the five for a gain of a couple. This drive began at the Winnipeg 27-yard line. Oh. This is the play before. Watch Fred Reed. Not only do you have to run in this league, but you have to watch. He's, he's right here. He's at the top of your screen. Can you see him right here, folks? He's right there. Watch what he does to Anthony Cannon. He get, low man wins. <laughs> low man wins. Fred Reed takes him for a ride. I guarantee he's going to lower his pad level next time that happens. And you're going to see a tremendous collision. Second and goal from the five guy line. Pierce looking to the end zone. Five. Kevin Ivan's got it. Flags are down. Ivan out to the five-yard line. Buck Pierce was rocked at the end of the play. And this may be roughing the passer against Toronto, which would negate the interception by Ivan. Yeah, Kevin.